Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuam, and today I'm going to talk with Ilana Kohanchi, a professional actress. There she is, let me invite her. I've so, uh, I have sent the request, let's hope that you are receiving. Okay, let me send the request once more. Okay, I've sent the request. So Ilana, would you send me a request? Maybe that would work better because I have sent twice, you haven't received it yet. Hey guys, welcome. Welcome everyone. Hey, Ilana. Hi. How are you doing? Are you doing? So, Can you hear Ilana, me? Ilana, would you send me a request? I'm great. Sorry, I was trying to do it on the computer and I couldn't see the request. So I'm on my phone, but we're making it work. <laughs> <laughs> so how's everything with you? Everything's great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, in which city are you now? I'm in California, um, so currently in well, working in Los Angeles mostly, and then sometimes I'm in Northern California as well. But uh, you have been uh, most of your life in San Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, you know my whole story. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. did my research. <laughs> yes, so I, uh, so I was raised in San Francisco. Um, you know, I was born in Russia, but then I, I was raised in San Francisco. And then I moved to Los Angeles uh, as an adult already after graduate school. And I worked there for a good 10 years. Uh, so at which age exactly did you move to the U.S.? I was three. Three? Oh, I see. So mm -hmm. how much do you know Russian now? I'm completely fluent because I speak Russian every day uh, with my family and with my, oh, that's great. my parents and, you know, with my grandparents and with everyone. I see. And also I noticed your family name sounded Persian. Yes. Uh, yes. That's, that's correct. Correct. Yeah. My, my husband is Persian. Oh, that's nice. So do you know any Persian? Yes, yes, I speak some Farsi. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, Ilana, uh, I have a series of questions ready for you, but before going through them, would you please uh, introduce yourself briefly to the viewers? Of course, I'd be happy to. Hi, viewers. Thank you for watching. My name is Ilana Kohanchi. I'm an actress. Um, you may have seen me recently in WandaVision. Uh, <laughs> like playing Irina Maximoff. I, uh, you may have seen me on Brooklyn Nine Nine or Chicago PD or the Newsroom or I don't know whatever you watch. Veep. Um, everyone has their favorite shows. But if you haven't seen me in anything, please go on IMDb and look me up and watch things. And otherwise, I'm happy to be here. And you have been uh, in many movies, but which one was your favorite role so far? Nowhere Girl. Nowhere Girl. Mm -hmm. And why is that? So, okay, Nowhere Girl was an independent film. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Or it's available on, let's see, it was on Hulu. I don't know if it's on Hulu anymore. I know it's on Amazon Prime, like the Prime video, uh, if you guys have that. It's a really special, sweet story. Um, it's like a romantic comedy. I love rom-coms. And it's about a guy who is very depressed after losing his girlfriend. She breaks up with him and he meets, you know, this perfect girl or seemingly perfect girl who I play. Uh, and it turns his life around. And it seems like everything's great until we realize that this perfect girl is imaginary. And oh my God. <laughs> nobody's perfect. There's always something wrong with everybody, right? And then, you know, adventures ensue. So yeah, it uh, sounds interesting. I, I highly recommend it. Yes, as I should see that. And I see Brooklyn Nine-Nine fans also here. They say hi to you. Thank and you. Uh, as far as I understood, uh, you will be also in the movie Jungle Cruise. Yes. And as, a, as an Italian woman. So uh, That's right. can you tell us more about it? Yeah, uh, well, I can't. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can tell you. So 
you know, all, Disney, like many companies like Marvel, um, is pretty strict about releasing information before anything comes out. I can tell you that I am in the movie, that I do play an Italian woman. Um, and I can tell you that I am, I play one of Dwayne Johnson's uh, character's love interests before he meets his official, you know, okay. Emily Blunt's character. Um, <laughs> That's, That's awesome. good information. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what about your previous movies? Like, uh, for example, you had a role in WandaVision as yes. Irina, like a Russian girl, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, Irina Maxwell. Well, Russian, Russian is not exactly. Um, so Marvel fans know, uh, and fans of WandaVision know that Wanda and her character in that whole story takes place in Sokovia. And Sokovia is a made up, you know, made up country that's much like Russia is in Eastern Europe and they do speak Sokovian. Uh, so Irina Maximoff is Sokovian. <laughs> um, and, you know, the Marvel universe will tell you that it's very much real, but in terms of the real world, it's a, it's a made up country and that is where the character is from. But yeah, it's very similar to Russian and it's very similar in terms of the intonation and the accent. And so it was, it was pretty easy for me to pick up in, in terms of that. So is that correct that, uh, you know, I talked with uh, Sasha Kerber recently and uh, she told me that in, in the US, usually when they say a Russian role, it means that it contains also Eastern European part and they say, okay, that's the Russian role. So that's it's true. pretty much it. <laughs> that, that's very true. She, Sasha's correct about that. So all Russian actresses know that when you're Russian, you sort of get sent out for you know, Bosnian, Armenian, um, like Czechoslovakian, they're just, they kind of group everything in Eastern Europe together, Polish, Ukrainian. And if you know Russian and you can sound Russian, it, the accent kind of covers the rest. Though I don't speak any other Eastern European languages besides Russian, but you know, you figure it out. <laughs> and what about your role in Brooklyn Nine-Nine uh, as Lexi? What a great show. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine-Nine fans know it's a great show. It's funny. You know, it's single comedy. So it's very like realistic sort of down to earth comedy. Um, and then I played, so it was the finale of season two. And the, you know, it's a, it's, it's like a, a comedic procedural. So it is that sort of cops and robbers world, but in a funny way. And they're following the, you know, the main cops of the show are following this bad guy and for a long time and I play his very very ditzy girlfriend um who just misunderstands the whole situation and makes it even funnier because they're you know they're pretending to be engaged to catch this bad guy and of course my character just wants to know like all about the engagement and the ring and is just asking them all the wrong questions when they're trying to get out of the scene so it's a uh, it's funny it's a funny episode but uh, yeah Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a good show and uh, it happens to be that you are in many movies with crime and comedy genre. So Isn't is that, that your funny? favorite one? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I hadn't even thought about that because you're right. Chicago PD is also a crime. Exactly. A yes. um, and yeah, I've done a bit of quite a bit of comedy with the Veep. And yeah, you know, you're right. I love comedy. I love crime. It's so the procedurals are just interesting in terms of like the detective mystery sort of thing so I'm into that um not so much a fan of the crime stories otherwise I like the the mystery solving part but I love comedy and I love especially romantic comedies um so that's like my that would be my favorite kind of thing to work on but but I you know I love to act so I'm, I'm happy to play any character and you know you just make it yours but in terms but of my favorite thing yeah yeah, but is there any specific role that you would say, I really dream to play this role? Yes. <sighs> okay, there was always the one that got away. You know, every actor will tell you there's always one audition where you were like, oh, that was my role. You know, and even though if you don't get it, you just feel attached to the character in some way. And so I was up for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the show on Amazon Prime. Unfortunately, no. It's a great show. It's fan I mean, and the actress who got it is just fantastic. Like Rachel Brosnahan does an amazing job. She won a Golden Globe. The show won a Golden Globe. Uh, but as soon as I read the script, that was the kind of thing where I was like, this is going to be a hit. 
you know, and I knew, and I knew it a year before they made it. And I knew it, even though it was a web series, I knew it. And, and that would have been like my dream role. And of course I didn't get it. Someone else got it, but, um, but I, you know, I was up for it and I auditioned for it and I think I did a pretty good job. Um, <laughs> they're they're yeah. lost anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, they're doing great. They're not crying. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that, that sort of would have, something like that, I guess, would be my dream role. So for the next one. <laughs> and I observe a strange role, Missy in Nightclub Secrets. Well, yeah. what the, what's that about? It's great. So it's a, it's a movie on Lifetime. Um, and as most Lifetime movies are, it's sort of this, like, twisted mystery, you know, that you follow. And it is about a nightclub where a big mystery takes place and someone seemingly gets murdered. And the main character, uh, played by Kate Mancy, who did a wonderful job, she goes undercover. She's a teacher. And she goes undercover to to go into this nightclub and find this whole world of like bottle girls and, you know, and find out what happened to her sister who worked there. And I play Missy, who's a character who already works there and sort of teaches her how things go in the club and how to survive there. Um, I see. So again, we can observe the same genre, like crime yeah. and somehow. Yeah, yeah so is right. that right that when for example you are in a movie let's say again crime and uh comedy genre and other producers and directors they notice you in that movie so if their movie is somehow similar they try to offer you the same uh role yeah yeah i mean i wish offer offer would be a, is a beautiful word <laughs> no, <laughs> they offer you a chance to audition for it and then you know you still have to you still have to do the work um, oh, okay. But that is true. And I think that that's how a lot of actors get typecast because it's not so much necessarily that they are exactly right for something or that they're exuding, you know, a certain essence, but it could be that they did it once well, and then they did it twice well. And then people see that and they're like, oh, this person can do this. But it doesn't mean that they can't do that other thing. You know, it just means that you happen to see them doing well in this. And so I think that's how things get recurring but as actors we're also I mean I can't speak for all actors but I am am very grateful for those opportunities because I think well thank you for trusting me with this because you know I've done it once well before and now you're giving me the opportunity to do it again great you know it's better than not having work but don't discount all the other genres you know because it doesn't mean that someone can't do it. it just means that you know in like any other field when you see someone doing something you trust them as having experience with that one thing and yes so, you're right they say okay she can do it differently yeah. so we can trust no. her yeah <laughs> but it would be nice also to see you in variety of roles and you have done actually variety of roles anyway but the genre pretty much was similar but the characters yeah. were different as you explain yeah. and i noticed in uh, one of your posts on instagram you were dancing salsa uh -huh. Is that right? <laughs> so you know yeah, how to dance yeah i do yeah i i grew up dancing ballroom latin ballroom um i used to compete uh, as most russian people do actually i think exactly. it's very common in russian families that like you put your kids in latin ballroom dancing and you know so i just grew up doing it and then i competed for a long time and then i was on a salsa team um, I love to dance. I haven't done it in a while, but I love to dance. That's very cool. And you said that you speak Russian fluently, but have you ever been in Russian movies before? <sighs> Let me think. Um, yet I've played Russian characters in American movies a lot. Oh, but not Russian movies. No, I did. I did a short film once in Russian, but again, that we filmed in America. So that was like an American, you know, writer and and director. Yeah, I haven't done anything in Russia. Um, but I think my Russian heritage has at least helped me in terms of getting roles in that sort of Eastern European, you know, sector, because at least they believe Russian people more than American people to play to play those roles. So that helps me and speaking Russian helps me as well. That's good. So they need that accent somehow, but you don't have Russian accent, but you fake it somehow. Of course, I can give you a Russian accent anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> my whole family, my mother, my father, everybody speak like that. <laughs> That's cool. So you would consider, for example, a role in Russian movie if someday they offer you one? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I would That's love good. to go to, I've been to Russia since I, you know, I was born there, but then I've been back um, as an adult as well. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful country. So uh, which city of Russia you were born? St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Great. The best I've been, one. <laughs> I've been there maybe three times or four times. And that's one of my favorite cities. That's wonderful. Me too. <laughs> so um, you mentioned that, uh, so you will consider it as you said, but do you have any favorite uh, Russian movie or Russian series? Yes. Um, so old school. I'm going to take you back to the black and white days. Um, there was a movie that I loved, a Russian movie. In, in Russian, it's called "Of Jazzy Tolka Dievushki, which the direct translation would be in, in jazz, there are only women. But um, the, the American name is Some Like It Hot. And so that, that was a really good old school movie that I had seen, you know, the Russian version. And then there's also... What was another? Slyokim Param, which means it's, it's also... After good shower, work. right? Yes, yeah. Yes, exactly. It's like bon douche. I know yeah, some yeah, Russian, exactly. that's why. Exactly. That's what we say. Do you speak Russian? Yeah, some Russian. Yeah, plocha говорю по-русски. He's nice. Yeah, well, so, so, you know, so I don't know if you've seen Slyokim Param, but it's, it's like a good old, funny, black and white movie um, from from very long ago I don't I can't tell you the exact year because I don't want to mess up but uh it's it's a great movie and you guys should watch it that's great I, I actually watched Lot and also I remember Yahudeyu if I'm not mistaken <laughs> and it yeah, just happened for like me flight? uh and Yahudeyu like I'm I'm getting skinnier I'm getting skinnier and yeah. Lot I mean ice oh Lod. Lod, yes, the pronunciation. Yeah. Lod, yes, Lod with a T means flight and Lod means ice Lod. with a D. Yes, yeah. exactly. So they had also Lod Dua recently. I mean, about two or three years uh, ago. Was but it good? I, unfortunately, I couldn't watch the second one. The first one, I was in Russia, actually. I could watch oh, it. Oh, cool. But okay. fortunately, in Cyprus, they are showing a Russian movie. They've started to do that. So tell and, me, because I don't know, in Cyprus, do you guys get American television and movies at the same time as we do? Or you get it, but you get it delayed? Uh, actually, we do it on time, fortunately. But, but really? uh, for limited movies, not for all of them. I see. Because, okay. yes, for limited version of some uh, movies, uh, I understood that, okay, we don't get it right away. But for those ones which are very famous, so that, that's, uh, again, very fast we get it. And, but for Russia, the same situation. Russian movies, we get it very fast if they right. are very famous. And when you get the American movies, do you get them with subtitles or dubbed? Or how do you, because I don't imagine everybody speaks English. Or you do? Uh, you I think there? we do. For many of them, we have subtitles. In okay. northern part of Cyprus, uh, it's Turkish subtitle. And for the southern part, Greek subtitle. Okay. And but uh, where I live in the Turkish side, I noticed that yes, they have some uh, Turkish subtitle, uh, but not necessarily all of them. Nice. I've been to Greece and Turkey um, a couple of years ago, and I thought it was so beautiful. Not not to Cyprus, unfortunately, but I went I went mostly to Greece, and then we stopped in Istanbul. Oh, I see. And uh, would you consider, for example, to visit Cyprus for one of the uh, movie festivals, maybe in the future? Absolutely. I would love to see Cyprus. I hear it's incredible. Um, hopefully. That's great because that's what I'm trying to do also here to find promoters to invite you guys here for such events. For example, let's say if it was uh, the release of Jungle Cruise, then you guys could, for example, join here also for a premiere or something. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes, yeah, that, that would, would be, be lovely. Amazing. I would love that. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, Somebody corrected me. This girl said, you're right. Jazzy Tolka Djevushki is an American movie. Some like it hot because it is with Marilyn Monroe and everything. But it was, I had seen the Russian version of it. But yes, that's, that's correct. It is. It is an American movie. I don't want to lie to you guys. Um, so in Russia, movie. I noticed that they totally changed the name of the movie to something else when they yeah, translated. Yeah, absolutely. I don't why know is why. That? Though it's accurate. No I think it's accurate for the movie. If you see the movie, it makes sense. But... I don't know why that is. 
Yeah, so uh, beside this uh, uh, recent movie that we talked about, Jungle Cruise, do you uh, work in any uh, current project at the moment? Nothing else that's upcoming. I mean, WandaVision just, just came out, like, you know, last month. So that's still kind of buzzing about that, which is great. And then Jungle Cruise is soon to come. Um, hasn't come out yet, but it's finally coming out. It was delayed a year because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, but nothing else at the moment. But I will be sure to let you know as soon as there's something else I can talk about. That's great. And uh, what's your goal in movie industry, I could say? Well, I'm very ambitious, so, <laughs> so I have big goals. Uh, but for now, I have like a stepping stone in my mind. Um, my current goal is I would love a series regular position, which is just like, you know, a TV show and one of the kind of main roles that are there regularly. That's my current goal. And then eventually, I want to do amazing movies and I want to win an Oscar. But that's, you know, in the future, later on. For sure, it will happen. And we are waiting for that day. Thank so, you. Thank you. Me yeah. too. <laughs> and by the way, we have a challenge on our page named Crazy Eyebrow. Okay. We try to pull 